All right, so you guys are trying to build a home golf room or a simulator room, practice room, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you might have questions, right? Biggest question that I get from, you know, the majority of my students who are looking to build one of these over at their house in their garage or whatever. Um, biggest question I get is ceiling height requirements and, you know, how tall do my ceilings need to be in order for me to have an efficient height for going through my bag? Um, easy answer is eight feet, six inches is the minimum you should have. Now, that being said, if my, if my ceilings were eight feet, six inches, um, I probably wouldn't be swinging much more than a, maybe a seven iron. Um, I'm six foot two for reference, um, got quite long arms. That does matter. Uh, your wrist to floor measurements, how tall you are, it will matter as well as like, you know, path. Obviously, if I throw my hands way out over here, I can almost hit it with just a wedge in my hand. Um, so the biggest thing that I try to tell people when they're building a room is you want to make sure that you have at least nine foot ceilings. If you have eight and a half feet, it works, like I said, but the ceiling heights that I have in here um, in this particular room, they're nine feet tall. So I can go through my bag. I can hit driver. I can hit all the clubs that I want and I shouldn't have any issues. Now, being said, I am pretty careful in here with nine foot ceilings with the driver. So I probably won't swing driver too much in here. Um, I don't have a whole lot of space for me to the screen anyways. So that does affect um, ball data, you know, using, using the launch monitor I'm using, which is Doppler. So let's get into it. I'll give you guys a tour, hopefully answer some of the questions that you guys might have out there. Again, kind of going over all the stuff that I have set up in here and also what I budgeted towards the build. All right. What I was looking for when I built this was one um, to teach online. As you guys may or may not know, I am a golf coach. Um, I'm a professional competitor as well. So having somewhere where I can practice 24 seven and then also teach and do my online videos and instructions for my students, it's very important. So I have somewhere comfortable to, to swing. So the impact screen, I'm gonna start with first because I, I have a list of things that I spent money on that are very important and there's a top three. This is probably the most important. So impact screens, everybody knows you can get cheap ones for a couple hundred dollars. I spent about $800 and, uh, $820 on this one. So this is a custom, a custom impact screen here. Um, and it's surprisingly large. Uh, might not look like it on here, but from end to end, we have 13 feet. And then from roof to floor is nine feet exact. So I wanted it at the exact height of my room. And I'll kind of explain how I mounted this in my room um, and kind of explain why I wanted it that height. I didn't want too much play underneath. I wanted to attach fabric underneath that. So um, that is probably one of the larger pieces of equipment that you're gonna buy. Budget your money onto the impact screen. The next thing that, I, that I'm that i gonna kind of count with the impact screen is the projector itself. Now I have an Epson projector, it's a 4K projector. So this is $1,200. The one that I'm probably going to upgrade to is two grand. Um, the reason why they're difference in price is this is in a short throw projector. This is a standard one. So I did have to mount it outside of the room, as you can see, to kind of give me enough space from wall to projector to give me the width that I needed. So that's something you guys have to consider and it's off center. And notice when I was swinging earlier, you saw my shadow over here. If I have this mat right where it's at, the hitting mats in the center of the room, you will see my shadow because I didn't push the projector that far to the right. Um, I didn't want it to be too far out to the right and then have to compromise the, the scaling of the screen. So I do usually move this off center um, when I'm not filming just so I don't have a glare in my eyes. Um, so if you guys are wondering if that glare is noticeable when you're standing here, uh, it certainly is. I mean, you can look with the camera, the, the monitor is looking right at you. So that's where my head goes. So I, if I step back, you can see how it kind of moves out of frame. So very important to kind of do all your measurements first and do your research first before actually pulling the trigger and buying a projector because some of them do not move to the right um, angle that you need. All right, so launch monitors. Let's talk about these for a second. So this one I have is obviously the Flight Scope Mevo Plus, right? So a lot of you that are familiar with these or maybe you're researching it and you have some questions, um, there's two routes you can really go with a home simulator. You can go with a Doppler radar system. 
that's basically just following the golf ball, tracking it and calculating what it's going to do versus you can go with something with a camera, right? So you can go with the, the fast capturing or high motion capturing cameras that they have, such as, you know, Foresight's GC2, GC3, GC Quad, the, you know, Bushnell Launch Pro, uh, list goes on. So there's a bunch, there's, there's newer companies out there um, Garmin makes one. So there's a whole load of different launch monitors that you could get. Um, so say you're on a budget, right? You have to look at two things. You have to look at space, which is probably the most important. So if I pan back here with my camera and I'm standing looking at the screen here, the launch monitor is just right below me. Now flight scope, they suggest that you have your launch monitor about eight feet from ball, which from ball to net is about eight feet as well. So 16 feet from traveling distance essentially from where the launch monitor starts and where the ball starts to to ascend through the uh, through the impact screen right so my um, setup in here is it's a little tight from there to here I mean I'm out seven and a half feet from where the launch monitor is to the hitting zone um, and from hitting zone to the impact screen I'm out about seven feet as well so I do have enough space I can bring it in a little bit more and I've tested this and through testing I found that it doesn't capture spin rates nearly as accurate as it does when you give more space so um, the other thing to talk about with Doppler radars if you want more accurate carry distances and spin rates the metallic uh, ball stickers and you'll see one right here on this tailor-made ball uh, I've put multiple on some of them and tested it and it honestly works better with just one marker on there. You'll see this one kind of rubbed off. They do come off um, triple track lines. I don't know that the Doppler even sees those. Um, didn't really notice a difference, but I did notice a difference when I put one of those stickers on the ball. So a couple of things that you can research is, you know, how much space you have, how launch monitor is going to work, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, now, if you have a limited space, you might want to look into like the Bushnell Launch Pro. You can get those on eBay for, you know, maybe two to three grand. I know brand new, they run specials and they go three to 3,500. So you can get a Launch Pro. It's pretty much just like a GC3. It uses Foresight. You can also use this, which is what I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Um, so that kind of gives you an insight. So as far as you know, how this is compared to a GC2 or GC3 or quad. I've used all of them. I have a review um, on my channel going over the Flight Scope Mevo Plus. Go check that out. Um, that'll answer most of the questions you have when it comes to comparisons. So when we talk about budget, budget of the screen, we got about $800 from my indoor uh, golf shop. You can go hit them up online, uh, Indoor Golf, or I think it's shopindoorgolf.com. Um, those guys are awesome. They help me out with getting the right specs, the right dimensions, and also the right um, you know, aspect ratio. So 16 by nine, whatever you're going with. If you're going with a one by one, which is a perfect square, um, go to their website and talk to them about it. So $800 I budgeted there. I budgeted, um, spent a thousand on the Mevo Plus, got that used from a guy locally out here. Um, well, I actually paid him eight because I traded traded a club to him too. So you can get creative and you can get some, some good deals on this stuff. So you don't have to buy everything brand new. Um, I just wanted something that I can take to the range for accurate club head speed and ball speeds. And it turned out that it works perfectly fine in my home studio, which is a plus. Projector, I spent, uh, like I said, $1,200 on that with tax. Um, so you have 2000 between just the projector and the screen. Now we're using this room as a media room. So my kids, obviously they got all their, all their stuff over here. They got the PlayStation 5, they got Nintendo Wii, all that kind of fun stuff. We also have our computers set up to where they can game on this. So it's 4K, um, our gaming computers are pretty much a beast, um, which I'll go over the, that, uh, those specs as well. So the frame rate's awesome. Um, aspect ratio looks great on this. Um, I do wish I had a little bit more coverage of my screen, but again, uh, I'll probably upgrade and get the short throw projector just to make sure that I can actually get the full coverage there because it would be cool to, to have the screen cover 100% of that impact screen. Um, so yeah, two grand between the projector, the impact screen that doubles as a movie theater screen. Call it another thousand used for the Flight Scope Mevo Plus, and you're sitting, what, around three grand already just for an at-home setup, right? So now let's talk about the hitting mats. 
Um, this is still something that I'm going to change later on, but I just need something now. I need something so I can start shooting some content and giving some lessons to my students online um, and shooting stuff for my website. So hitting mat, I got a pretty good um, hitting mat. Now I'd say it's probably medium grade. Now this isn't the highest level, like it's not a fiber built mat with the rubber padding around it to keep it from slipping. It is a pretty good impact um, hitting mat though. If you look at the thickness of it, half an inch, just over half an inch thick. Um, the turf that I used over here is pretty much just a putting green carpet. Super cheap and I'll get a nice close up here for you. But I have some closed cell foam underneath that putting green. So basically what I'm using this putting green for is necessarily to roll putts, although it's, it's very fast, it's very smooth. Um, it's more so just as a landing strip. So I got this bad boy on Amazon for like 80 bucks. And then I, lays, uh, I laid a, a closed cell foam underneath it. Uh, you can go to the foamfactory.com, get closed cell foam. You can get acoustic foam. You can get all that stuff for, for sound deadening and padding and stuff. So I just put some foam underneath it so it's soft, um, catches the golf balls as you saw when I was hitting them. This hitting mat is holding up pretty well. It's got T-holes in it, so you can put some rubber T's inside of it. This guy I got off Amazon as well. Uh, this was, I wanna say $250 for, for this, and it's a five by four. So my original plan was to test it out. And then what I was gonna do, I was gonna order two of them and put them side by side just so I had a huge turf area. But I think it's, it's fine for now. I mean, it's been doing the job and then just got a nice throw rug um, underneath everything. Just again, to help keep things from sliding and also helps helps uh, deaden sound. So if you're in a if you're in a home and you have wooden floors, um, the acoustics drive you nuts. You hit a ball and it echoes through the house. It's it's just terrible. So try to put anything you can for sound deadening. Put down rugs. Put down a more closed cell foam. Hang curtains like I did. All that kind of stuff. So you know when you're talking about budgeting, just the the turf area. You can go pretty cheap with it and make it effective. Um, I didn't spend what more than five hundred dollars for the for the eight by ten rug hitting mat putting green and the closed cell foam so pretty uh, pretty doable there now when we talk about the sides of the projector here we got a nice view over here and you'll see how the projector is going wall to wall now i'm gonna show you how i mounted mine i'm gonna get this out of the way here so pretty simple and a lot of my students have asked me in the past hey i have a home golf room that I'm building. How the hell do I mount my projector to the walls? Do I have to buy one of those expensive cages? No, you do not have to buy one of those expensive cages. All I did was I put some anchors through the wall here, got some bungees, and I'm going through the actual grommets that they include with these hitting mats. So, I, or hitting screen, sorry. So what I did is I just bungeed the bottom. I bungeed about three quarters way up, and then the top of it, actually has a rail, so get a good view of this. So on top of my impact screen, I took some metal conduit for, you know, what you'd use for in electrician work. Took some conduit, it's about, I think it's three quarter inch or half inch. And I just used the same type of conduit uh, hanging anchors, mounted them to the ceiling, right where I wanted the track to go. And then I just bungeed the impact screen to that top. So the impact screen is essentially just hanging down from that. And then I just bungeed the corners just to give it a little bit more of a tight pull. And then back here, I left myself enough space to make sure that I can get to the windows. I have my AC unit hooked up. Um, the exhaust is hooked up to the window back here. So I can still get behind the net and, and do all that. And then at the bottom, I did lay some fabric on the bottom of the impact screen just so if my kids or students come in here and they blade a shot and it goes underneath the screen, it's gonna catch something, it's not just gonna hit the wall. So very important to, to protect your walls from you know, chaotic ricochet shots and all that kind of stuff. So that kind of gives you an overview of how I hung my, my projector um, impact screen. So the shank zone, what all of us golf instructors know too commonly is right here this wall so notice i put some nice hard acoustic panels on the wall to protect the drywall and also the most important part about that is it protects us from getting hit from you know almost like a stray golf ball that goes off to the side so wanted to make sure i had that 
on the wall. That is the most common area for people to shank a golf ball. And if I stand behind the hitting mat, I'll show you exactly what I mean. And most of you watching this have probably experienced that yourselves. Shank it straight into the corner. Bad shanks, ex extremely bad shanks hit that part. So really just padded this area behind the curtain. Um, and those as well, you can get them on Amazon. So you can get them through acoustic companies too, but all these things I'll list in the description. These things are super cheap. I got 48 of these, I believe, and it only ran me like 70 bucks. So super, super cheap and effective way to pad everything. And then for the top portion, yes, I have some blackout curtains that I got that are hanging down. They're nine feet tall, so they go perfectly to the floor. And then the top there, I just have some regular um, carpet felt liner. Now, this is called, I think it's through a company, they call it Polymat. All it is is it's speaker box fabric. So similarly, what you would use to cover subwoofer boxes. Um, and I just cut that into a strip. There's Velcro attached to the impact screen. These guys that make this impact screen are the best, by the way. Like they, they know what they're doing. So all you do is you take this Velcro off and it sticks to the, the hook side. It's a hook and loop type of Velcro. So I just placed that fabric straight onto that. No Velcro needed. It acts as the soft side of the Velcro and sticks to the the hook in, the hook in uh, hard part of the Velcro. So that's how I built my enclosure. Next thing is to add on. Obviously, I'm gonna add a whole strip of some more of those acoustic panels all through the roof. And then also above this, just in case someone skies a ball through, <laughs> through the top of the roof there. I've seen my kids do it, so I know it's possible. Now, going over to the, the computer and what we have going on here. So we got ourselves a gaming computer. Um, I didn't spend a crazy amount of money on this, honestly. Like You can go pretty crazy with, with gaming computers. This thing, uh, I believe, is it's got some sort of AC cooling in it, so it's runs super quiet and it's always staying cool. It doesn't overheat, um, which is very important because I want this thing to run long, like long hours, not push out a bunch of air, noise, and heat. Um, so I was looking for something quiet. The graphics card is probably the most important aspect of a computer. When you get a launch monitor, you need to pay attention to what needs to be driving the actual software. So if it calls for you know a certain graphics card, my advice is get the step above it. So I can't tell you the specs on it, I'm not a computer person, but I just went online, printed out the sheet, went into a Best Buy, looked at their gaming computers, told them I want to spend around $1,000. I got that gaming computer and the, the monitor, I believe it's a 4K monitor. That was definitely worth the investment. I think I spent between those two $1,300. So when we start adding up all this stuff that you need to run a golf simulator, um, you know, most people assume they need $10,000 right out the gate, but you definitely don't need 10 grand. Um, so I'm showing everybody, you can actually build a pretty decent 4K quality, you know, high end around five to $6,000 and even less if you're, if you're budgeting more than I am. Let's talk more about building up the golf room in your house and what you're looking for. And when we're talking about technology and all that stuff, you have to ask the simple questions like, what are you looking for? Wow, look at that, made the first one. First shot in the whole 70 yards, beautiful. So you have to really talk to yourself and ask yourself these questions on what it is you're looking for in a golf room. Are you looking for the most accurate ball measurements? Um, are you looking for something that you can just actually play like simulated golf rounds with your buddies and your family. If you guys are looking for something to actually play, that's where I would say this is probably better than Foresight's FSX um, play. So now when we're talking about, and when we're talking about the actual software that runs the golf simulator stuff, right? That is probably one of the most important aspects in this whole thing. Um, I've messed around with all of these different um, softwares and stuff and you have a lot of options now my favorite thing about this one this is e6 this is by far my favorite for two reasons reason one the graphics in this are absolutely insane compared to um foresight so when i was using you know 
a GC2 and a GC quad using Foresight's FSX software. Um, it was, you get used to it, so you don't really notice any of the funny quirks. But I will tell you, the graphics are unfinished. And around a lot of the greens or bunkers, you'd get to the edges and there wouldn't be sand. It would be like just silly graphics. It was like a, an old engine from the 90s, early 2000s that they were still using for the graphics and the visuals and the, in the software. So if you enjoy this video and you have any questions about launch monitors or about simulators or anything like that, or if you want specs of the computer, everything's gonna be in the description below. I'm gonna put everything, all the links. Um, I'll try to find the link to my computer that I got. Um, my computer, most people say is an overkill for what was called for, but I wanted to make sure that my kids had a nice gaming computer. They like to play um, PC games and stuff. So I wanted to make sure that it was versatile for everything and it can run, you know, three HDMI outputs. Um, so drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, trying to think of anything I missed. I probably forgot quite a bit. So be sure to answer you guys' questions.